facilitated process in bodies. This is unelected. The current convention secretariat will operate as such as appropriate. So just dictatorial power, capability to do whatever they want. The convention's financial mechanism will include a multinational climate change fund, including five windows. Then it goes through all the different taxes. Let's go to page 22. And here, the countries agree that carbon dioxide is a poison, agree that the taxes must be implemented, agreed there must be a monetary census of all carbon activity and a regulatory system. And we read the climate bill that's passed the House. 35 agencies given unlimited power to do whatever they want. Let's go to 142. And again, I'm, I'm just hitting a few of the points, ladies and gentlemen. This thing is incredible. Let's look at the tax sections here of this. Let's go to 164. Let's go to 142. 142. The EBFTM will be supported by five technical panels, research and development, that's their hired scientists that make up all the lies for them, capacity building, transfer of technologies for mitigation, REDD+, and market mechanisms. The technical panels shall comprise government representatives elected by the COP, the private government of the UN, with balanced regional representation who are experts on matters related to such and technical panels to be open to input from other experts that they select. Let's go to 164. Here's 160. The Annex 1 continues that countries shall institute initiatives at the national level, notably tax exemption and some subsidies for the owner of patented technology with a view to promoting transfer and diffusion of the environmentally sound technologies to developing countries. See, they choose what gets to be developed, and what gets tax incentives. And we're just skimming the surface here of this nightmare. Here's 164. The executive body on technology shall comprise government representatives elected by the COP with balanced regional representation or experts in matters related to technology development transfer and be open to input from other experts. Be open to all parties, members of the committee, and panels shall be determined by the COP, a multinational climate technology fund, that's the big bank, shall be established that will provide technology-related financial requirements. See, you don't get the loans backed up by taxpayer money and the carbon tax unless you submit to them, as determined by the executive body under COP. There's a headline, Exxon CEO advocates emissions tax. See, the oil companies are behind this. Just like the insurance companies wrote the health care takeover bill. The EBT shall be comprised of government representatives elected by the COP with balanced regional representation who are experts on matters of technology development and transfer. And it leaves it up to the UN who is, how that's set up so it's unelected. They do what they want, when they want, how they want. This is a global government... And it states in here that countries can't get out of this unless all the other countries agree. No one will let us out of this. Awareness itself that will drive the change. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But the many business leaders who have been present here uh, are among those taking leadership in other ways. We talked, for example, about, uh, we heard uh, this morning about uh, efficiency, and Jerry made that uh, point uh, very well. I'm going to have to do a part two on this tomorrow as well, because this document also says the countries agree carbon dioxide is deadly. The countries agree that any climate change is bad and that you're not supposed to have climate change on the Earth when the climate is changing on all the planets and moons of the solar system continually. It is a religion, 
and they're and they're teaching the children. In fact, I sent you guys a cartoon. Did you see that cartoon I sent you, uh, where they are teaching the Australian kids that puppies drowned because of carbon dioxide, and that all of this is bad. We're going to play that later, coming up. But, I mean, I just randomly opened this to page 35, part A. It says, recognizing that climate change is an additional burden to development. When this whole thing is about deindustrialization and de-development, as the U.N. states in its own documents. It says, applying climatic information in sectoral planning, as well as in cross-sectoral planning, such as integrated water resources management. And then you read what that means. It means the international body will determine... How much water can be used in your country or nation? I mean, this is a power grab over everything. The technical panel shall comprise government representatives elected by the COP. So this private UN group, it will decide who gets to be chosen. And right now I'm going over the stack that uh, covers tax. And I'm continuing here on page 170. Let's go to 171. Transfer of technologies for mitigation and market mechanisms. See, they will decide what can be in the market. Technical panels comprise government representatives elected by COP. But all the real meat is in these documents, how it's going to control everything, how private banks and promote joint ventures to accelerate development. See, only select corporate groups will be able to get the business because it's given to them by the U.N. panel. And then they will control, the big banks will control what infrastructure can be put in and what infrastructure can't be put in. And the most important facet is all of the signatories have to vote unanimously to let any one party out of it or to amend it. It'll never happen. So it gives total dictatorial power to this private body Listen to this. This is from page 35, part 5. Improved emergency response capabilities, including governance structures that encourage effective use and coordination of local, national, and international resources. It's down here at the bottom. So this is the type of nightmare that we're talking about and that we're discussing right here at the bottom, if you want to show people on TV. And it's all written in this dry language. Improve knowledge of socioeconomic aspects of climate change and promote the integration of socioeconomic information into impact and vulnerability assessments. So see, it's just into every law, every local rule. It makes it a religion. Over and over and over again, It details this entire program. Let's just go over the tax sections. Page 35 of the Framework Convention on Climate Change. And this is what the Congress has already passed in the House. Draconian rules that match up with this. And it states the nation states have to pass accompanying laws to line up with it. So let's look at page 35. Provide incentives to adaptation. See, they tax you if you don't do this, and they tax you even if you do. Legislative changes, removal of barriers, that means borders, and local, state, and federal laws. Provide incentives to adaptation through legislative changes, removal of barriers involving women as active participants, means get sexes divided, and other supportive approaches. Minimize incentives that encourage... Maladaptation, that means if you don't do it, they tax you. Reduce pervasive incentives.